my name is Jessica Eyes, and I'm auditioning to be your citizen journalist for the upcoming Republican and Democrat conventions. My name is Solomon Kleinsmith from Omaha, Nebraska. I'm not a fan of either Barack Obama and the Democrats or Romney and the Republicans and how much they're bought and paid for by special interest money is a big part of why. As the convention kicked off, we kept wondering how people can anonymously give unlimited amounts of money to influence an election. The way they do it is through a special kind of nonprofit called a 501c4. I'm going to say 501c4s until it comes out as naturally as nonprofit. 501c4s, 501c4s, 501c4s. Sponsored by a corporation, so they start a non-profit type of 501c that can also raise funds unlimitedly. But they don't have to say where the cash comes from, that's called dark money. Don't act so stunned, but non-profits can't support politics only, so they print a few pamphlets and they won't look for. And there's another way donors can cover the tracks, have your non-profit donate to your super PAC. So if you're ever grilled by the FEC, just tell them that the money is a mystery. We wanted details, so we spoke with Sheila Krumholtz, the executive director of the Center for Responsive Politics, and Georgia delegate Stefan Passantino, who was the lawyer for the Gingrich campaign. 501c4s are just c4s, which are advocacy groups. Those groups, which have a lot more money now, have a lot less of an incentive to be responsible over the long term. These are groups that have every incentive to show up, form, say a lot of really nasty things about somebody, and then dissolve. IRS is, has jurisdiction over 501c organizations, these nonprofits. However, they don't require disclosure of the donors or even of the spending until well after an election is over. You're talking about 501c4s right now, or are you talking about super PACs as well? Well, both, really. And the law is kind of muddled there. What a super PAC does is it's organized for no reason other than to run ads promoting or attacking candidates. That's all they do. A C4 is more of an issue advocacy group, but really the lines blur a lot. And you have a lot of issue advocacy groups that are kind of hard to tell from what you would think of as a traditional super PAC uh, political express advocacy group. The Supreme Court in the Citizens United decision allows these groups to make any kind of express advocacy expenditure, political ads or mailers or radio spots or whatever. Uh, and, and they're allowing them to use the magic words of express advocacy, vote for this candidate, defeat that candidate, and to use unlimited sums from virtually any source. If I were able to set up a rule, I wouldn't try to get the money out of the politics because that's never going to happen. Money is always going to find a way. What you really want to do is find a way to incentivize that money to go to the responsible middle. I'd much rather have the Republican National Committee or the Democratic National Committee have the ability to spend much more money defining a candidate than some outside group that can't even talk to the candidate. Most of the people that I've met here, most of the Republican delegates that I've met here, um, they're for more allowing for people to donate as much as they want. Some of them are for allowing entities to donate as much as they want, but they're for transparency. Yeah, I'm so glad you raised this because this really is and should be the centerpiece of, of the common ground that can be found. In an election year at, with such high stakes, people are being barraged now by even more information, more advertising, not all of it, uh, truthful. There's a lot of negativity and deception out there. It's impossible for us to know that, oh, in fact, it's only one person, or it's only one corporation, or it's only one union, and that they stand to gain or lose specific things in this coming administration, depending on who's elected. 